Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more training videos for beginners, please visit me at devu.com. In this lesson, we're going to look at another iteration statement, the while iteration statement. And let's just recap the iteration statements we've learned about up to this point. We learned about the for loop or the for iteration statement, and it allowed us to iterate through a block of code a number of preset times based on a counter. Uh, then we also learned about the for each iteration statement that allowed us to iterate through a block of code once per item in an array. Now in both of these cases, you know ahead of time how many iterations or how many times to iterate through the given block of code. But what if you didn't know up front how many times that you needed to iterate? Uh, maybe you need to keep iterating until some condition is met. In that case, you'll want to use the while iteration statement. Uh, also, we'll take a look at the do while iteration statement, which allows us to always iterate at least one time before breaking out of the iteration statement. So we'll look at both of them in this lesson. And I'm trying to think of use cases where this would be useful. And the most obvious one to me was creating some sort of little menu system for our console window application. You've seen it before, uh, especially if, you're, uh, if you've worked with DOS in the past. Uh, at any rate, what we want to do is uh, begin with a new project. You can see I've already created it. It's called While Iteration. Again, another console window application. Please pause the video catch up with me. When you're ready, let's go ahead and get started by creating a, uh, a method that will print out a list of options to our users in the form of a menu. So we'll do something like this. So we have some more work to do here, but what we want to do is display this. So let's just start by displaying the main menu here, like so. And let's run the application. And uh, here we can choose an option. No matter what we choose at this point, our display will disappear. But suppose that we wanted to uh, actually kick off another feature of our application. So say, for example, uh, let's go private uh, static void uh, print numbers. And then we'll go uh, private static void uh, guessing game like this. And it will just go console.write line. And so now let's go ahead and call those from here. So print numbers and then guessing game. All right. So now let's run the application. And we choose the first option and we're able to play the print numbers game. But when I hit enter, we are completely uh, 
removed from the application. What if I wanted to return back to that main menu? How could I go about that? Well, I could use a while statement to, uh, to determine whether to show the menu again or to completely exit out of the application. So to make this work, what I'm going to do is start off with uh, a new data type called bool refer to it briefly a moment ago it's basically true or false all right and so we want to create a new boolean variable called display menu and uh, we'll set its initial value equal to true now what we'll do is create a while statement I'll just type in while tab tab and uh, what I'll say is while the display menu equals true all right and then we will uh, call display menu. Now uh, a couple things here. What we'll need to do is actually then retrieve back from main menu uh, a boolean whether uh, the user clicked exit or not. So what we'll set is display menu equals main menu and then have main menu return a bool itself. Of course we've completely broken the application at this point but that's okay. So here we are going to continue to display the main menu until main menu returns the value false. So if somebody chooses option number three to exit, then we might choose uh, to uh, completely exit the application, in which case we'll return false. Now if they choose some other option like 4, 5, 6 or some other text option then we might just want to re-display the menu so we'll return true again. Furthermore uh, we might want to uh, return true uh, as well here after we go through each of these options as well. So now let's go ahead and run the application and see how it works this time. All right. First of all, if we choose option number one, it'll d display a, uh, a message. And after we hit the enter key on the keyboard, it will display the menu again. And I can select number two, and it'll display the message. And then I can uh, hit enter. And now we can hit uh, the exit, and we actually exit out of the application. So what the while statement allowed us to do in this case is check for a condition. And when that condition is true, then we can break out of the while loop. Otherwise, we're going to keep executing the code inside of our code block. All right. Now, what we can do here is actually shorten this up a little bit. We don't need to say while display menu equals true. Remember that we're, just like when we're using the if statement uh, or the else if, we want to evaluate an expression. And if an expression is true, then we want to either execute that block of code below it or not. In this case, if display menu is already true or if it's false, uh, we don't need to actually do this evaluation. It already e evaluates to true or false, so we don't have to do any equality there or, or check for equality. Uh, it's either true or it's false, and so we can just write it like that very simply. All right. So uh, moving on. Now what we want to do is uh, kind of maybe fill in the gap on some of these other little games we have here. So let's play the print the numbers game. And in order to do that, let's, uh, let's go ahead and say uh, console write type a number and then uh, int result equals console.readline alright and that's going to return back a string but what we really want is an integer so I'm going to go int dot integer dot parse and this will allow us to take whatever string has been returned and uh, convert it into an integer now we should have the actual integer value and here what we'll do is uh, create a counter for ourselves so int counter equals one and then we'll go while, tab, tab, the counter is less than our result. Then we will do a console.write with the current value counter. We'll go console.write and we'll do a little delimiter. And then we'll, do, uh, we'll increase the counter. Now there's a tiny bug with the application. Uh, we will come back to that in just a moment here. 
let's go ahead and run the application and let's go ahead and type in a number let's type in the number five and it types in and it, it will print out the numbers one two three four so we're able to change the number of times on the fly that will iterate through a block of code now it just so happens that this isn't exactly what we wanted and let me exit out of this uh, what we really wanted was to display from one to five so I'm gonna go ahead and add result plus one so if I typed in the number five, this would actually make this value six. So as long as we're less than six, go ahead and continue to execute these lines of code. But once this statement becomes false, once the counter is no longer less than six, if it's equal to six, uh, it will break out and we'll, we'll hit this line of code here in line number 59, the console.read line, okay? So that should work. Now the other thing that I noticed when we ran the application is that we keep seeing um, additional data being written to the window. I might want to clear out everything that's been displayed so far. So here we'll start at the top and do uh, console.clear and that should clear off the screen for us. And I'll just copy and paste that here to print numbers as well. So when we run the application again, this time I'm going to choose option number one and notice that it cleared off the screen and we're in the print numbers game. I'm going to type a number, type the number, uh, let's go four. It types out one, two, three, four. I hit enter. It clears that off and it displays the menu again. Awesome. Three. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is play the guessing game. And uh, again here, I'm going to go ahead and clear off everything that's currently on the screen. And what I want to do is choose a random number. Uh, and then I'm going to allow the end user who's playing the game to try and guess the number between 1 and 10. So how do I create a random number in C Sharp? Uh, we actually use this built-in class in the .NET Framework class library called the random class. So we'll create a new instance of the random class and we'll talk about what that means, create an instance of a class uh, in an upcoming lesson. So let me do this. Uh, we'll go random my random equals new random and again that should make no sense to you whatsoever and that's just fine I'll explain what that actually did in an upcoming lesson when we talk about classes okay and uh, I want to get a random number from my random class so I'm going to call the next method and here one of the overloaded versions is that I get to give it a minimum value and a maximum value so the minimum value will be one but the maximum value I want it to be 10 so I'm gonna say don't let it be more than 10 in other words 11 is out of bounds okay now that I have a random number uh, I'm gonna also keep track of how many guesses the player has guessed up to this point alright then I want to also keep track of whether or not the uh, the user was correct or not so incorrect and we're going to say it is true that they were incorrect. Now watch this. I'm going to create a, a do while statement. I want the block of code that I'm going to create to execute at least one time. Uh, so that's why I'm going to choose the do as opposed to the the do while as opposed to the while. The while will evaluate the very first time and we may never actually run the code inside of our code block but this time I wanted to run at least one time so we'll say do this but then at the very end we'll check for the statement while and if the while condition is true then we can break out of it okay so while uh, we continue to be incorrect is true so while we continue to be incorrect then we're gonna keep guessing all right, so let's start with this console.write line. And uh, we'll say uh, guess a number between 1 and 10. All right, and so we want to retrieve that number. So we'll go uh, string result equals console.read line, like so. All right, now that we have it, we can do an evaluation. So if the, the result is equal to uh, the random number, so what, if whatever the user typed in is equal to the random number that we generated, then we want to break out of the while statement so we're no longer incorrect. So in other words, let's go ahead and set the incorrect equal to false. So at this point, 
we've correct we've guessed correctly and we'll break out of the while statement and here we would want to say console.writeline hey you did it correct all right however if they did not guess correctly then what we would want to do is write console.writeline and then uh, wrong and we probably want them to guess again which will happen because while incorrect, incorrect is still true, then we'll come and we'll re-execute this, this uh, block of code. Looks like I'm missing a end of line character here. I can see that as I hover my mouse cursor over that little red area that I forgot my, uh, I forgot uh, a semicolon there. Otherwise, this should work. Now, there's one other thing that I want to do. I want to keep track of the number of guesses. So each time the user adds a guess, we've already initialized that value there, that variable guesses. I'm going to increase guesses or increment guesses by one. So I type in the word guesses plus plus. That means I want to add one to the current value of guesses. And then here I want to type out how many times it took. So it took guesses it took you guesses and then that like so all right let's run the application and let's choose to guess a number between 1 and 10 we'll start off at 3 and you can see it says it's wrong so i could continue to guess a number between 1 and 10 let's go 4 let's go 5 6 7 Eight. Okay, the number was eight. It took me six guesses to get to that. All right. So now when I hit enter, it returns me back to my main menu. And here I'll just hit uh, three to exit. And let's go ahead and change our menu at this point. Uh, let's just do uh, print numbers and then the guessing game. All right. And so we've used the while statement in a couple of capacities. The while statement here is used so that we can continue to display the menu until the user decides to exit. Uh, we are using it to merely print out values to a screen, but we get to determine it at runtime or let the user determine it at runtime as opposed to uh, the four or the four each where it's kind of predetermined ahead of time. And then finally, we're able to use the do while uh, to uh, continue to ask a series of questions until we get a satisfactory answer, at which point then we can break out of the, the loop. The do variation allows us to run our code block at least one time uh, as opposed to immediately jumping outside of the, the block if the, uh, the condition is true. Okay. So that's why we would use a, um, uh, the while iteration statement. It's pretty useful in certain cases. Uh, and so let's continue on. We'll learn about strings in the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thanks.